In general, doing this podcast has been a lot of fun, but it's also been a lot of work, a lot of editing, and a lot of posting. What about my needs, man? I don't know, man. What are you doing about it? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Horses with Horns. I'm Nicholas. And I'm Indranel. On this episode, title, What About My Needs? We're going to talk about all those other things outside of the company that keep you sane. We're going to talk about things that um, should be doing on your personal life outside of business. Things you could be doing with your business internally that normally you don't do because you're focused on other things. And things that you can do for your business externally that will bring balance and hopefully keep you sane and keep us sane as we try to think about these new ideas. So as a founder, uh, thinking and putting every thought into your business, what do you think it's a good balance, something to do on your personal life to, to counter that? Things that I do or things that I should do? I think whatever's best, probably what you should do, but put some of what you actually do in it. Okay. Well, also a little bit of a caveat. Yes, this podcast does take some time, but you know, as as far as founding things go, it's not that bad. I can imagine though, like if you are creating a business and that's the only thing you're thinking about and you're working on it a lot, you do need to still think about the other things in your daily life that are actually truly more important, like mm-hmm. your health and your family, your friends, all of those things which can get put on the back burner when you're thinking about a problem so deeply, those are things you have to keep thinking about and prioritizing. Yeah, for sure. One of the main differences that I've experienced um, having a full-time job that say that I really liked, um, that I really felt driven to put my best and thought about it and brought my best to the job versus founder is that when you work normally, I think just about, maybe with the exception of sales, when you have a job, you normally are putting, you're working on a project, you're every day you move forward a little bit more. When you work on sales or just a business and uh, having the uh, business move forward, those changes don't happen. You don't go from zero to one by you know 0.1 on monday 0.2 on tuesday you just go from zero to one at one moment and you spend at zero or you stay at wherever you are for a long time right so with that in mind it's very easy to get lost in the rest of the day um, you know going into the night when you maybe should be thinking about other things regarding your family your friends and whatnot it's 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 more difficult to stop thinking about the business because at 5 p.m. it feels like nothing has changed. Yeah, I agree. So I, I'll answer this from two points of view um, because I do want to stay on topic and answer your question of how do you stay sane and how do you differentiate? Um, you know, in my current job, I do put in a lot of time and a lot of effort because same thing, like to your point with your last job, I care about it. I want to do well for my team and my company. So it's never a strict nine to five. I am thinking about it at other times. With that, though, comes the trade-off that you have to make sure that you do shut off at some point Mm -hmm. and understand that things can wait until tomorrow or that, you know, not every fire is as urgent as you might think. Yeah. But also, I will acknowledge that with your own business, something that you think about that deeply and that you are truly at maybe like in the early stages solely responsible for, it's probably harder. You do, (laughs) it's hard to, to really shut it off. Yeah. Difficult because you're, you're still, you know, uh, rubbing sticks together, waiting for a spark, right. And, And you're trying different angles just to see a spark happen. Uh, it's, it's, it's not about doing more. It's not about saying like, oh, I can just, you know, I want to work really hard. I'm going to go do double the tasks. It's more about trying to figure out something that just sparks. Um, so my main thing on personal life, uh, this is general, but really specific at the same time, is just disconnect 
force yourself to disconnect. You know, um, whenever you catch yourself thinking about it, when it's after a time that you think you should you should be you know thinking about other things, more important things, just remind yourself this is not the time for that. And also remind yourself that probably uh, the effectiveness of that uh, is it probably adds more stress than it adds um, actual real benefit. What do you think about those schedules where you don't necessarily time box it? Where, you know, like on one hand, for me personally, I actually benefit from routine where it's like from this time to this time, I'm going to be working. And then after that, I'm going to do my best not to. But then particularly with starting a business, maybe even in more creative fields, it's probably not that linear, right? Like if you have a great idea at 10 p.m. and you want to work on it, then you know, just in general, how do you think yeah. about those types of schedules? I think in the earlier part of a business, a lot of it is um, getting in touch with clients and finding a way to be heard. You know, um, it is a very lonely uh, journey, right? Because think about it, right? When you are employed at a company, there's a Slack channel called Random. You can post a meme. Someone's going to react with uh, uh, some kind of emoji. All the validation. Right. So there's there's always someone that you can talk to about anything, um, even in meaningless ways. When you're on your own thing and it's just you, you don't get those things. Right. So I would say that since a lot of it is about connecting with others, especially with your customers, right? A lot of that work is not necessarily very creative, but um, either something that takes big numbers, uh, a lot of calls, a lot of emails, or something that you just got to keep trying, maybe figure out different ways. But your customers, you know, they're not thinking, they're not waiting for your call, right? So you're working really hard and they're already thinking about other stuff. So even if you do figure out something at 11 p.m., your potential clients are going to bed. You know, there's there's very little that you can do at 11 p.m., I think. Prepare for the next day, sure. It's always good to prepare for the next day, but I I personally prefer, you know, to shut off and dis- fully disconnect at a particular time and on a particular day, like Sunday, for instance. Yeah, We might be more similar in that regard. I will say that there are... I, I do not work perfectly linearly as much as I want to say that I I work from this time to this time as I said that I prefer turns out that's not always the case I think there are times where I want to be more flexible with it but when it comes to being effective I do think that working from set times is better and I do think that's actually also because of the other piece like the the not working side of from this time to this time, I'm going to rest. I'm going to be intentional about not working. Mm-hmm. And that makes the work more effective. Yeah. One of the things that I've actually, one thing that I would recommend to people on their personal life is to find something that I guess feels like work, but it's different from uh, business, starting a business founder type of work. One of the main um, incentives for me to get uh, within journal on this podcast was to counter that you know now i have someone to talk to now i have someone that we can laugh with about whatever exchange ideas catch up as friends but also it's giving me something that is very linear you know every week there's a new episode every week there's a new accomplishment with a business in which you're trying to uh, persuade customers and and grow that business and 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 validate the service or product um, it's the complete opposite of that. So I would find something to do that uh, feels more. You can see the progress very quickly. Maybe lifting weights, you know, going from ten pounds to twenty pounds. Very clear improvement. Um, building something. Uh, and I always recommend exor- exercising is very important. Um, one uh, one thing that I found interesting, um, not exactly about um, business, but the very famous singer and musician from the 70s, James Taylor, he uh, struggled with um, addiction. I, I think he was an alcoholic, if I remember correctly. 
And they asked him, you know, he did recover from it. And they asked him what he thought was very crucial. And he said, well, you know, following the 12, the 12 steps was very important. But he said, but exercising was very important. You know, there's something that happens when you go for a run, for instance, and you just sweat it out. You know, there is very much a physical component to not being stressed out. So I would say exercise. And if you can do it with a group of friends, even better. This is probably counterproductive to the topic, but I feel like a lot of the ideas I have in thinking through a problem, I do on a long run. Mm. But at the same time, it is that decompression. I, I do, I don't know if I enjoy running, but I <laughs> I do a lot of running anyway. Um, playing tennis, which is again, common theme. I think that's three episodes in a row now we've talked about that. <laughs> but yeah. totally agree, exercise in general very helpful the better your mind is working the better your body is working and then vice versa yeah whether you're going to think through the problems there or not i I think it is it's critical yeah you know i um one of the things that i've done that now for nearly three years that i found very helpful to just uh get the day started but also to have a moment where your mind is thinking about completely different things it's taking cold water showers you know, for those few minutes that you're under cold water in the winter in any season, you, you're not thinking about anything else, but how can I move quickly so that I can get out of here, you know? Yeah, I'm going to say sometimes in the long run, particularly marathon distance, I'm thinking about not dying. And that's basically <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Which oddly is actually pretty good. That helps you with other stress. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. What about things uh, to do? inside of the company that maybe you know when you're when you get caught up in that rat race of just trying to get another client trying to trying to get money right as a business what are some things that you can do inside the company that maybe it's a good decompressor and it's also important yeah so i mean first before i answer that i'm going to say that my current ceo during my interview process actually said something really really important about generally this theme which is that not every fire is equal that some problems are just more important than others and not everything needs to be put out today Mm -hmm. so using that framework of understanding that hey sometimes some things really do just need to be fixed right away and other times it's like not actually as big of a deal as you think that can help frame your internal company culture of you know, make sure you take time for yourself. Not every problem is as big of a deal as you think. Some things can wait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. One comment, though, with that, um, maybe when the company grows, right? Growth that I've, as a founder myself, I've not experienced yet. But when you get to a certain growth, you start to experience fires, right? When you're trying to get the spark going, the problem is there's not a single fire yet, you know? So different problems for different stages, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I remember back in the interview jet days, things felt very magnified because when we were working together, we were, I think, still five or six people at that time, very small company. Things cannot wait at that stage because there's literally no one else to fix it. Mm -hmm. And again, it, it does depend what type of issue it is. Many things can wait. Many things are less important than they seem. Mm hmm. But at a very big company, it's like, okay, I'm tired. Somebody else can handle this, even if it is important. When you're five or six people, that's, yeah, that might not be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true, true. Um, One of the things that I would recommend, right, to do uh, inside the company, for the company, uh, and with the goal of staying healthy and staying sane, is to take a day from the from the work week Let, let's say that you only work monday through friday take one day and take that day to do things take that day to start something that you'll finish that same day um something that will give you that start to finish it could be you know uh, research it could be skills development it could be fixing Uh, typos on your website it could be anything that you think okay if i start this i can finish it by end of today more importantly and i believe the one that said this was mark cuban he said i constantly think about um 
what I would do, what I would be doing to defeat and beat my company, right? My own company. So that's an interesting exercise, right? If you take a day out of the week and you take a couple hours from that day or something, uh, let's say you do it on Fridays and you just sit down and for me, right? Let's say, uh, or, or to, to make it more uh, concrete even, let's say that there's a, in a different house somewhere, there's a guy named Indranil and there's a guy, Nicholas, and they're doing this podcast, right? And it's called um, Horses with Many Horns. I don't know, something very similar, a clone of your business, a clone of your project, right? And imagine they know about you. What do you think they would be doing to say, hey, we have to do better than them? Do that. You know, if there was a clone of your company and they were aware and they were aware of you, but not you of them, what would they be doing? But in terms of like staying sane and healthy. It's or... well, it's a good moment to sit back and imagine, right? Because that's not really happening. Um, not that you know. But it's a good way to say, okay, let me take time to plan out exactly what I could be doing to really drive change, right? If I were racing against someone. Um, and that could help you plan out what you're going to do next week. And that, that can help you also plan out new things constantly, you know, because otherwise it's very easy to get caught up doing the same thing every day, hoping that something happens. But if you take a day to sit down for a second, and just say, if a company just like mine wanted to beat me, right? Same stage, same uh, growth, same number of clients. If they wanted to do better than me, what would they have to do? Yeah. So I think very tactically, two things that I use, and I'm thankful that my current company uses one of these as well, no meeting days, and also just yeah. generally work blocks, which you can use flexibly. Like It can be for very tactical work. It can be for... Um, more of that planning work that you don't necessarily get to where you don't get to step back and look at things from a broader perspective. I think no meeting day is very helpful. And I think actually to your first point as well, the like finishing a task within a day, picking things potentially on those new meeting days that I for sure can do this thing in this time mm -hmm. because it gives you that sense of linear progress, which yeah. especially at early stage companies, you don't always have. Yeah, very, very rarely, for sure. Um, and there's also a lot of things that you can do for the company that you can do facing out, right? That you can work on company matters outside that take you out of that rat race. What are some of those things, Andrea? What, what are some of those things that, you know, one could spend time saying, okay, the company engages with the outside world in this way. I don't always get to do that. Let me do it. W what are some of those items? Yeah, so I think one very literal getting outside thing is a day of volunteering. Mm -hmm. So that's not necessarily directly with your customers or community, but giving people at your company time to go work on something that they care about for a day or two. I think that's beneficial. It's also good for your brand anyway. It doesn't hurt. Right, that's true. Yeah, uh, I think mm -hmm. other things that you can do to kind of get out of the day, day to day is... Um, it turns out my current company does a lot of things really well, but uh, I think like MLT and SLT, so kind of like director and up, to your point, they, we spend a couple of days every quarter in person doing things that are a bit more team building focused, doing things that are not always even planning. It is just like DE and I workshops, getting to know each other on a very personal level and yeah, like spending time with each other to to really understand how to work with each other uh, with each other more effectively. Right. Uh, <clears throat> similarly, I, I, I didn't think of it as volunteering, but I, I thought of it as take a day to give someone else outside the company, maybe a potential client, maybe not, uh, but take a day to do something for free for someone, you know, take a day to say like, hey, you know, here's, um, I don't know, Here's a file with um, companies that are uh, about to increase their budget and so on. So that I found and that I've been working on. Here's ten of the hundred. Yeah, here. 
um, and without expecting anything in return. Uh, I just came up with an example. That could be one of the things, right? Um, and also, I found that entrepreneurs really like to connect in general, and they really like to connect with other entrepreneurs. Um, actually, this is something that you told me. We were talking about networking uh, years ago, two or three, I think. And um, I was telling you how I was going about networking with people all over New York City. And y you had an interesting comment about it. You said um, some of the best network is ultimately connecting with people inside of your company. And you said because uh, you and them both share the same struggles and people bond when they struggle in the same way. Um, and I think when you connect with other entrepreneurs, you'll connect like that. You'll, you're bonding because you're facing the same problems. I don't remember saying that, but I agree. So I'll take it. <laughs> In general from 2020, what's a little <laughs> bit smarter. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, this is a really good time to listen from uh, our guest, Elizabeth. Uh, she and I met uh, through my wife, actually. We were on a, um, a trip to Washington, D.C. in the middle of the pandemic. Not in the middle of it, but like September 2020, I think it was. And, uh, so the middle. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and we had a, a coffee outdoors, and it was really good. You know, she had a lot of thoughts about uh, how the work environment had been impacted by it. And her, her whole company is about many of the things that we're facing nowadays between combining your personal life with your work life and not just that right because you have a personal life you have a work life but everybody else also does and how you bring that collectively um she has a lot to say about this topic i, I thought she'd be a great guest uh follow her on linkedin she's always posting really really good thoughtful stuff let's uh take a listen and excited to hear what elizabeth has to say Hi, I'm Elizabeth Knox. I live in Washington, D.C., where I parent four elementary-aged children alongside my husband. I am also the founder of MatchPace, where we help companies find their right way to do hybrid. Companies are losing good people and distracting the people who stay from doing good work because they've left hybrid to kind of sort itself out, but they haven't actually built a solid plan that prioritizes mutuality between employees and leadership in the name of serving their stakeholders. We help companies find the right hybrid for their type of work aligned with their values and their team. Probably the best habits I have in my personal life include prioritizing alone time, I'm an introvert, prioritizing relationships, and prioritizing my health. How do I do that? I feed my introvertedness by leaving the house three mornings a week before anybody else is up. I walk to the metro with my own thoughts. I go to my office where I spend some time alone, sometimes working, sometimes just recharging and kind of connecting with my own self. I also prioritize connecting with other people. I am super fortunate to have an amazing partner and we take a few hours each week to connect about big or things, big or small. And I am really fortunate to have friends from all seasons of life. I love having good friends and being good, a good friend. After that, I prioritize my health, which right now looks like long walks and a daily meditation practice. In terms of good work habits for work with inside of our company, we start each team call asking people how they're working well and living well, which is our tagline. And people share some work that they're proud of, a project that they're working on, and what's going on in their personal life. It's not always rosy shares. Part of working well and living well is acknowledging the ups and downs of life. But we create a sense of togetherness around those things before we get down to business. And I would say our best habit within the company is that we have created a culture of gratitude. Um, I am super fortunate to have and have had in the past an amazing team of people who work at MatchPace, and I tell them thank you as often as I can when I see them doing something great for a teammate or a client, and they say thank you to me too. And then good habits for work outside of my company, I invest in formal coaching, and I reach out to tag up with mentors who are a few steps ahead of me. I am currently doing a coaching practice called focusing. It's somatic-based somatic coaching, which means that it's about what's in your body, not just what's in your mind. And it has really helped me identify my roadblocks. And contrary to what you might think you do with roadblocks, focusing you actually sit with them and try to understand them and learn what they're teaching you rather than just trying to push past them. And then I have a few women in my life who are a few years ahead of me in this journey of running a business. And I just reach out and lean on them for a sanity check. So those are the habits that I do for myself within my business and for my business, but not inside my business. Elizabeth, thank you so much for sharing. That was really, really good. Uh, very insightful and you know you've taken the topic of this episode into a company in very much a need right that's why we're talking about it right now 
what uh, stood out about what Elizabeth had to say? Yeah, first, thank you again. That was super insightful. Um, love the concept of working well, living well, and togetherness, and just kind of reminded me of that sense of bringing your whole self to work and understanding that people are people. Like when you're at work, you are still a human. You still have the rest of your life that's coming to work with you, whether mm -hmm. you want it to or not. Yeah. So I think acknowledging that there's going to be those ups and downs and that you have to manage through that. It, you know, it's not just work when you're at work. Definitely. I, you know, and this is not to side with uh, one side or the other, but um, one of the things that I miss about working on site is being able to tell who's having a good day and who's having a bad day. Uh, when you talk virtually with someone, when you're on a video call for 30 minutes, one hour, you don't know what happened before. You don't know what happens after, right? So finding ways to to really figure out a little bit more, you know, of course, there's privacy always, right? But a little bit more about your coworkers uh, and the people that you're working with, partners, um, a little bit more about what's surrounding their work life and also what's surrounding your own life as well. Super important. Yeah. So I think to that point, tactically, one way that I've seen that's working is, especially in these hybrid and remote first environments, is the value of a good one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. of be intentional, check in on your team, not just about workflow, but like make sure that they're actually okay as people and they feel supported and feel that they can take time when they need it um, and, you know, I'm, I'm never an advocate for a meeting for the sake of a meeting, but I do think that making sure you're meeting with your team at least once or twice a week, even for just a couple of minutes, just to, just to say, Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. And when you're a founder and it's just you or very few of you, uh, also connect with friends, connect with other, uh, founders, with other entrepreneurs, like I said. And one thing that I really liked that Elizabeth mentioned that I found really really helpful and you can do this formally or you can do it informally find advisors i think early on because um one of the things that you can do for your company i guess somewhere in between internally and externally is talking to someone that's not net sitting inside and bounce ideas with that you know hopefully someone a little bit more experienced and even if it's not someone you know that is your senior it just could be someone that has kind of done it before or is doing it. You know, just having that other opinion of someone that kind of gets it because they've been in the same shoes or they are in the same shoes. Uh, again, you can do this formally or informally. Um, just have someone that you can consistently talk to, not all the time, but take some time with some frequency to say, hey, um, what do you think about this? Uh, I've been thinking about uh, changing this, we're, we're uh, dealing with this problem. What do you think? You know, just someone that will allow you to remain sane. Some, sometimes uh, the effect of this is um, sometimes you need to hear that something that you're trying to solve is not the right problem to work on. And it feels... It feels pretty bad at first because it, it feels like, like you're giving up on something. But very quickly, you appreciate the feedback and then you're able to come back into work refreshed and ready to try different things. Yeah. I think mentorship and looking for somebody that is a little bit senior to me and things that I've done, it's something that I haven't prioritized enough historically. But I'm I'm starting to look into it more because I do understand that value of, and, and again, like it, it doesn't have to be somebody actually literally senior to you. It's just find somebody who's been through the same things that you have and they're a little further along just so that you can get some of that shared perspective. Definitely. Well, you know, um, life is difficult, right? Work life is difficult. Personal life can also be difficult. Find ways to remain sane. Uh, it is very difficult to start a company and, like I've said many times already, very lonely. So I would say optimize uh, every now and then your connection with your friends, uh, with your family, of course, and with people that are 
on a similar journey, uh, that would be tremendously helpful. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Horses with Horns. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.